I'm sitting here. I'm zooming with an icon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm zooming here with an icon. Where is he? You, you don't see the icon? You don't see him? No. Okay. All right, man. Oh, damn. That's the picture of me, bro. That's a picture of me. I was going to say, you're looking in the mirror. <laughs> what up, Phil? How you doing, bro? I'm good, man. I'm good. Just in here, here in LA, um, doing this Super Bowl thing. Yo, I, listen, first of all, man, congratulations. I think, man, all of us, all of us in the community, in the hip hop community, everybody excited about this. I mean, there's been a few rappers like Diddy, Big Boy, Outkast, and Nelly that got a chance to appear in the Super Bowl, but halftime show, but this is different, right? This is, this is mega, bro. Um, I, I saw a post from Snoop where he said it's like a dream come true. You know, this is the biggest stage you could be on, man. What does it feel like for you? Does you still get excited, right? Yeah, I mean, definitely, definitely I'm excited. I'm uh, excited for a lot of different reasons. Like, um, you know, Stafford, first of all, we feel like this is the closest we're going to get to a Super Bowl. Okay. It's through Matt Stafford. Okay. So that's, it gives us, it, it, it's a, it's a perfect scenario where I can root for a team that I like because I like because of Matt Stafford and the Detroit connection, the stars are aligned. And I'm going to tell you why else, because Al Michaels is doing the game and I'm a huge fan of Al Michaels. But I mean, but, but I mean, those things are great, you know, Stafford and Al Michaels, but man, you get to be on a Super Bowl halftime stage next to Dre, next to Snoop Kendrick, yeah. Mary J. I mean, what, what's the energy been like for y'all? Have y'all been able to sit down and talk this out and just, you know, reacquaint yourselves with each other? Um, Kind of, sort of, like, you know, we just been showing up at rehearsals and shit and just doing, you know, there's a lot of, there, there's a lot of kinks and stuff we had to work out like over the last couple of weeks. But um, yeah, I think it's, I, it's, it's going to be good, man. I think that, uh, I think it's great for, for, for the culture too, you know, Talk I think. Talk about that, it. Talk yeah. about it, man. Yeah. I, I mean, this is just, it's, it's, um, I don't know, like, I, like I, I don't want to give anything away, but when I, when when Dre first asked when we, when when the whole thing started going down and we were like okay this might be actually serious I I was trying to envision what Dre might do okay you know like I was thinking like yeah that's dope that all of us are gonna rap together right and that kind of thing but I didn't expect it to be like the production to be like this so mm. I was kind of blown away the first time I seen it because when the first rehearsal I didn't I haven't seen it until the first rehearsal like I didn't really know. The, like once you see it, it's just different. It's different once you see it. Yeah. Hey man, I, I, you know we've seen a lot of that. Like I've seen Prince. I've seen the. I've been a few Super Bowls. I was at the Beyonce halftime show, which was one of my favorites. Uh, Katy Perry when she brought out Missy Elliott was incredible. I think we all saw clips of Michael Jackson when he came out the stage. You know what I mean? And right now, man, it's a survey going around saying that this may be the biggest, most watched Super Bowl halftime show ever, man. Uh, I didn't know that. Oh, great. Thanks for telling me that. Yeah, man. No pressure. No, I just want you to be comfortable going into it. That's all. Right. Yeah. Thanks. Appreciate it. What's been your favorite halftime show that you could recall? Um, Well, the ones you just said, like Beyonce fucking destroyed that shit yeah when she did it um prince you know what's crazy like i can't like i can't remember the super bowls unless somebody tells me no you so you do you feel like are uh, y'all trying to kill it i mean this is this is hip-hop man you know what i mean like uh is it a general we're trying to of course we're trying to i mean that's just you know hope we all remember our lyrics and don't fuck it up <laughs> uh Jennifer and Shakira, they slammed, they tore it down too. And uh, what was that, Miami? You know, that's going to be hard. You know, that might be, I don't know if you're doing any choreography doing, are you planning on doing any choreography doing the show? I'm not sure. I still have to, I, we have to get some dancers and then I got to show them, show them the moves. So we might pull it out the last minute. Okay. I, okay. I, it, I might do all the choreographing. I see that, Em. It's time to go to the next level, bro. You probably seen me dance. You probably seen like me dance before or something like break break dancing or anything. You probably seen that, and that's probably why you said that. Because I have seen you dance, man. You know. Yeah, well, that's why I'm saying I, I'm just losing video. That was 
That was some good dancing. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. The Just Lose It video was some yeah. great yeah. dancing. So you do the running man, you know. Right? Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. So if we get some dancers, Paul, I can show them what to do. Okay. I'm on it. I'm on it, Sway. Thanks. Okay, Paul. Look, man, I just want this to be big because this makes a statement for the culture. Um, you know, these are the biggest names to come out of the culture. And, it, and I, you know, I just see, you know, Snoop is a household name globally. Kendrick, to me, is the most electrifying vocalist of this generation. Would you agree with that? I absolutely would agree. Yeah. Would agree that. Kendrick is, Kendrick is uh, at the very top, top tier of lyricists, not just to this generation, but of all time. My oh, opinion. Yeah. He, he'll be in your top five. I have this debate. The, okay. the debate is when people ask me about top five and shit like that, I feel like, I don't know if I said this publicly or not. I can't remember. I might have said it in the before, but I feel like, I feel like you almost have to take, you almost have to go by era. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. rap has evolved so much from, you know, hip hop, hibbity hop to what it is now, right? So you've gone through all those stages and shit and, and it's become more like the greats of this generation, like in the grades of the last generation, like, um, yeah, I don't know. I think that you have to take it by, I think you have to take it by gen, by generation just to be, to give a fair assessment. Like Biggie and Tupac were the best from their generation. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. just because, just because uh, the, the top tier lyricists right now are doing it to a level that is so different from the nineties. Mm -hmm. in the early two, you know what I'm saying? The early 2000s and shit. I feel like we have greats from each generation. I just don't know if it's if it's fair to um, to just put, you know, Kendrick against Melly Mel or Big Daddy yeah. Kane against you. Yeah, and or some, you and know, just like like you know, Melly Mel, like like he, you know, he was one of the pioneers. There wouldn't be hip hop, probably wouldn't be where it is without without rappers like him. And, you know, uh, I think that everybody's take, taken bits and pieces and done it their own way and made rap. Uh, the complexity of rap is different now. Mm -hmm. You know, J. Cole, like, inside rhyme schemes, the shit that he does, like, it's just different, you know? Mm -hmm. The man on your shirt right there, Red Man. Like to me is one of the under, most underacknowledged MCs there is, right? Absolutely. Yep. You know, I love when I see you collaborate with guys like Corday. You know, um, I love his new project, and, and even Jack Carlo. A lot of like Jack Carlo pretty, got his first start on your station on Shade Four Five. You know what I mean? And, and it is great to see you collaborate with these guys. Any of these younger artists, like at this stage in your career, you feel like you're learning from? What have you learned from? Um, it's a hard question to ask. Um, because I do keep up on everything that's, you know, I try to keep up with everything yeah. that's 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 out and who's, you know, making any kind of noise, who's the, you know, or looking to see who the next great rapper is going to be and shit like that. But, like, I take bits and pieces. I see how, like... Um, I mean, it depends. Trap styles and shit like that, like, um, are definitely fun to to fuck around with, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, hey man, we're all excited about this Super Bowl show, and I, I, whenever I talk to you, I try to get some excitement out of you. But uh, I know you'd be excited on the inside. But do you see? Do you understand how big this stage is? I I'm gonna tell you, it's fucking nerve wracking. Okay. okay. It's fucking nerve wracking. Like this is like. This to, to me, it's like, there's nothing more final than live TV, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like, if you fuck up, your fuck up is there forever. So that's why I'm saying like, I don't want to talk about it a, a, a lot in the sense of like, I don't want to fuck around and jinx it. But I think that, I think it's going to be something that, that people probably have not seen before. Okay. Or, or, okay. or seen it, but not at this level of, you know what I'm saying? like. Just the, the whole the whole show, the show as a whole, not just the, the artist that's on it, you know? How, how is, um, I mean, Snoop is, Snoop star has never stopped rising. You know what I mean? Like this dude is, 
been incredible how he's transformed and evolved as a um, as an artist, as a human being in general. A lot of things he's doing as a businessman. And he's you in got, every other commercial. Every I, other, I, he's getting every it. other commercial I see, like can't escape him. And he's I know the fact that he's the, it's great that he's made himself still be relevant to this day. It's incredible since 1991 to 92. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Good. How's y'all relationship? Have y'all got a chance to sit down and talk during this halftime rehearsal period? Um, not really, but, but just, you know, fucking around on stage and rehearsal and shit like that. But no, nah, me and Snoop are good. We, um, we talked months ago, right? Yeah. And that whole thing, you know, we just set our peace and, and realized that nobody nobody wants to beef within their own camp. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but nah, Snoop is uh Snoop is Snoop, man. And he's uh definitely, I always say this too about him. He literally could be a fucking stand-up comedian. Bro, he's so fucking funny, like just off the cuff, like. That shit he did with uh, Animal Planet. Oh, man. When he voiced uh, yeah. <laughs> when he Eric. Bro, he's like that constantly when you're around him. It's constant. It never stops. The perfect homie, man. Um, what about Dre, man? This is a big deal um, for Dre as well. And, you know, I'm always excited for what Dre might do. But this is, you know, not everything he might do happens. This is something that got to happen, you yeah. know. How how how's y'all relationship evolved? Is it work coming back, working together? Is, is it still the same or is, is it something absolutely. different about that? Okay. No, it's absolutely still the same. It's the same old, you know, like if I don't see Dre for two years, well, I mean, if I don't talk, I, I talk to Dre all the time, but if I, but it's like we, we uh, could just pick up where we left off if we don't see each other. You know what I'm saying? Like it never, it never stops. Our method is very much, pretty much the same as it always been when we're in the studio together, but, um, you know, Dre's got a lot riding on his shoulders right now with this. I think that, uh, yeah, I don't, yeah. I'm glad that it's not just me put it that way. Mm -hmm. You know what you I'm saying? Feel, you feel that pressure. Yeah. So what the is, whole show kind of being centered around him is, is a different kind of pressure. Cause I'm sitting here talking about my pressure. You know what I'm saying? Like he's got a lot more right now with this, with this whole thing. Mary J. Blige is reportedly re uh, releasing a new project, Good Morning Gorgeous, at a perfect time because she's about to jump on this halftime stage. Yeah. Damn, you got something coming? Are you working on something we should know? You could tell something, man. Well, I'm always working. Uh-huh. I'm always working on something, you know? Yeah. And when I'm done working on it, then we usually put it out. And if it was, if it, we told you, it wouldn't be much of a surprise, would it? Right. I mean, you know, I figured we all in the same family at some point. I got to, you know, y'all got to give me something, though. Right? No? Right. You know, I stand, I'm in the front lines, baby. What are we doing? <laughs> all right, man. Well, look, congratulations in all seriousness. This is a big deal for hip hop. It's a big deal for music culture. Obviously, all you guys have, you know, reached heights that we never knew the culture could. And so, uh, when well, you can, congratulate everybody. Tell Kendrick, you know, Congratulations uh, for what he's doing and what he's done. And M, try not to mess it up, okay? Don't. I'm gonna try, you. man. Okay. I swear to you, I'm gonna try. All right. Okay, All man. All right, bro. All right, man. All right, thanks.